understand. What's Paolo waiting for? He's going to try to get an extension on his note from Hardy. He might just as well try to get the old man's one good eye. Good morning, Mr. Hardy. Never mind that. Get on with your work. I want to talk to you about an extension on my note from Mr. Hardy. It won't do you any good. But come on in and get it off your chest. business I'd like to attend to. Don't scowl like that. Is it wrong for a girl to get a ride into town? It's wrong when the girl happens to be my girl and the fellow's Blake Hardy. You sound like you're jealous. Oh, it rubs me the wrong way, Betty. Why, Robert Hunter. Blake has nothing against you. I wish he had. I don't like him and he knows it. Will you deposit this check for Dad, please? And three tens and four fives for me. Fifty dollars? Why, that's all the check's made out for. I know it, but I have a lot of shopping to do. That's what you said last week. Say, are you going to go through life spending every cent you can get your hands on? Oh, putting why? nothing by for your old age? To say nothing of our children. We are going to have children, aren't we? Yes, that's what I thought. Now, listen to me, young lady. What? My future wife has got to be more economical or else... Or else what? Well, uh... Well, never mind. You go over there and make out a deposit slip for $30 and a check for 20 That's all you get. But... Never but... mind. That's all you get. <laughs> Must be the bank is flooding me, Sam. Four fives now, please. Yeah, sure, sure. Excuse me, dear. I'll be with you in just a minute. Sorry, miss.
Get him to the doctor, quick. Why, I couldn't shoot. You understand why. How much did they get? Most of it, I guess. I'm going inside. Yes, and get your hat and coat. Miss Wyndham, just one more question. Just how long after the man approached the window did you hear the burglar alarm siren? Only about a minute and a half. Now, I want to be fair. This jury know you and young Robert Hunter and the fact that you were his, uh, fiancé. It may have been that. Perhaps only a minute. Only a minute? Do you know what happened in that minute, young woman? Sixteen thousand dollars in currency were stolen. And that, that cow didn't move a finger to stop them. He was armed. The pistol was in his hand. Sixteen thousand dollars. He turned over every last dollar. Sixteen thousand. That's right, sixteen thousand dollars in one human life. You wouldn't think of that. And there might have been another murder. Betty Winton. Yet all you can think of is your money. Why, you'd been satisfied if I'd saved it, even at the cost of Miss Winton's life. Yeah, yeah, that's quite enough, Hunter. I'm not through telling this greedy old scoundrel what I think of it. That's not going to get you anywhere, Hunter. You're through in this town. Ladies and gentlemen, this is disgraceful. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, do you concur in this verdict? That Raymond Grady came to his death at the hands of persons unknown and through the negligence of Robert Hunter. That's right. That should read negligence and cowardice. Do you agree to that, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, put in, Carter. Sure, put it in. Do anything that one-eyed Hardy or his son tells you. You're all obligated to it. This town's been bossed by the Hardy for years, and you're not going to go against him now. So go ahead, put it in. I noticed your sign outside, and I'd like to take a look at your room. Oh, I should have taken that sign down. I just rented my last room. However, I may be able to put you up. You see, my boy Jamie, he's with the Mounted. I've been saving that room for him. He's on leave, and he's due home tonight. Oh, well, I wouldn't want to put him out. He's only staying a short time. You don't mind sharing the room with him, do you? Of course not. Come then, I'll show it to you. Thank you. I think I'm going to like this room. The rate is $9 a week, with meals, breakfast, and supper. In advance? Where are you employed, young man? Nowhere yet, but I'll soon have a job. Then it'll be in advance. All right. Five, four, one. Thank you. Thank you. Supper's at seven, Mr. Uh... Hunter, Bob Hunter. Oh.
didn't expect you so early. I broke all record getting here, Mother. You look fine, son. Feel fine. I feel better when I get a wash. I suppose my room's all ready for me. <laughs> well, I meant to tell you, I, you'll have to share your room. Now, don't tell me you've gone and got married, Mother. I was always afraid of that. Oh, I... <laughs> we go on. You know better than that. It's just that I rented your room to a nice young man. I want you to meet him. Okay. you on any. No need to apologize. You're paying for it. I hope you don't snore. Huh? I said I hope you don't snore, that's all. Oh, no, I'll stay awake and see that I don't. <laughs> you don't mind me asking, what business are you in? Well, I'm a banker. I, I'm, I'm an accountant. I have a job right now, but I'll have a connection soon, I hope. <laughs> A bold outfit operating up around Highlands. It's the third bank stick up in ten days. Did you read about it? Yeah, I read about it. So that bank teller got himself in a kind of a mess there. Yeah, that's one fellow that would like to see those bandits caught. Shouldn't be long. See, my outfit's out after them. Oh, you harnessed up the dogs, huh? And they'll soon get them. You know anything about the mounted? No, I only know it's pretty hard to join, isn't it? Yes, and getting harder. But they're always looking for young men. Better educated fellows. They can shoot fast, huh? No, they can think fast. They'll teach them to shoot fast in time. Jamie, Mr. Hunter, supper's ready. Yes, Mother. All right, Hunter. Come and get it. He'll be in a minute, Ma. Mr. Hunter! Why, aren't you staying for supper? What's up, running off? Oh, not exactly. When are you coming back? Maybe in a year, maybe two. Dennis and you, give me a great idea. Send that man in. Mr. Hunter? Of course you realize the government does not operate the Royal Canadian Mounted Police for the benefit of young men trying to clear themselves of the charge of cowardice. Then you know about the bank robbery at Highlands? Yes. And the coroner's verdict? Yes. 
I also know what you said at the inquest. I'm not interested in that. It's the character and fitness of the applicants that interests us, not what some coroner says. You know the territory around Highlands pretty well? I was born there, sir. I've hunted that country. Wild, isn't it? Parts of it are, sir. Very wild. Now, this young lady, uh, Miss Went. She'd be inclined to be in your favor, wouldn't she? She'd tell the truth, sir. I see. I'll do my best. I'll be there to see that you do. I've been assigned to active duty at Glengarry Barracks. That is all. but one enemy. He is the lawbreaker. In dealing with him, you have the entire force and majesty of the Dominion, even the Empire behind you. The firearms you carry are the least part of your equipment. Your greatest weapon is the character and integrity of each one of them. You joined up and came over here to find you. Thanks. Here's your nine dollars back. Or you better keep it. What for? You didn't even stay overnight. The advice you gave me. That wasn't advice. And I'll admit I wouldn't have even talked to you then if I'd have known you with a hundred in the case. But I'm sorry now. Oh, that's all right. You weren't the only one. I guess it was natural. I'm glad you feel that way about it. Because we're both in the service now. What'll I do with the money? Still rent in advance. Someday when I get a leave, I'll go back and use it up. Okay. By the way, I'm being transferred to the Black Hills District. Is that so? That's your part of the country, isn't it? Sure, I was born and raised there. <laughs> well, I guess I won't be seeing you for a while. That's right. Best of luck to you, Jamison. Thanks. And don't forget to give that nine bucks to your mother. Okay. <laughs>
217-34. I'd like to then. Thank you. As you men know, you've been assigned to my detachment. And before we leave for Black Hills, I want to have one more word with you. We are being sent after a desperate gang, the Madigan Gang. We already have a few men up there under cover. Your work will be hard and often dangerous, as this gang is using all the modern methods of crime, which you've been well trained in. I know you'll do your job well, all of you, if you remember. The tradition and honor of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. of this car is in cabin number four? Yeah. He came in about midnight. Anything wrong? Of course there's something wrong. I warned you, Ezra. Any time a young fellow prowls around at that time of the night, he's out for no good. Yeah, but, Baby Kins, how should I know there was anything wrong? Don't Baby Kins me. Don't mind I... all that. Now, you can help me in this matter. That's right in my line. I took a course in detective work. Detective yeah, I know. Work. Do you have any luggage with it? Yeah. We had a couple of suitcases and a golf bag. You know, there was something funny about that golf bag. I carried him in for him, and I noticed there was no clubs in it, yet it was heavy. Probably had a machine gun in it. This man's dangerous. Now, I want you to knock on the front door while I run around from the back and surprise him. Uh, yeah, 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 yes, sir. Yeah. Come on before he wakes up. <laughs> yes, sir. I know. I know. Ten seconds, you start knocking. Keep knocking. Yes, sir.
Nice little plaything. Use and vacuum a lot, huh? All right, move out. Where'd I get my hat? Just a minute. Where's your husband? I want to thank him. He thanked him. As soon as he comes to, I'll tell him. <laughs> Come on, let's go. How long do you think you're going to hold me? Just long enough to turn you over to the authorities. How soon do I get back to Stitch? Maybe you shouldn't worry about that. What do you mean? Just that. Listen, you can't hold me in this country. I don't belong here. Neither does Madigan, yet he may not be going back for a long time. Who's Madigan? Ever heard of him? Never heard of him. What are you doing up here? Who are you looking for on this part of the country? Oh, stop clowning. I come up here to see the sights. Sights, huh? Play a little golf, too. Now, listen, wise guy. I'll be out on a rip two hours after I hit Detroit. Maybe. Come on, open the door and get in. All right. Get your hand up against that rack. That'll hold you a while, tough guy. Tell me you've been cashiered out of the service. You must mean two other fellows, Constable. Yeah, yeah. Well, give me ten gallons of gas and I'll sign for it. Yes, sir. But you know, man. Huh? It's funny when you make a miscue like that sometimes, ain't it? Him coming in from the States. Found a golf bag with a machine gun and shells in it. Sound familiar? I'll say it does. That's the way Madigan and his gang operate. Exactly. I'm thinking maybe we can stop their source of supply of arms and ammunition. Careful what you say. I'm supposed to be Bill Evans here. I'm getting somewhere. I've got one car spotted already. Madigan's mob's operating in this neighborhood. You can help me. I'll try and get back to Highlands tonight. Uh, do for a two-day leave of absence. I'll be there. Right. Come to the Harris house about nine o'clock. Room five. I'll be waiting for you. You can help me a whole lot. Okay, Eddie. Sorry I mistook you. Oh, that's all right, Constable. You know, you're a dead ringer for a fellow I used to know in the service. Yeah. <laughs> so long. Sure, I seen him. Now, wait a minute. I'm a lawyer, not a magician. I can't spring eyes as easy as that. They got too much on him. Yeah, he was nabbed by a mounted clown. Told me to tell you they're working undercover. That's right. The guy at the Highlands gas station is a Mountie. His name is Jamie Jemison. Better keep on your toes. Okay, I'll keep trying. They don't think I've changed much, Betty. No, Bob, I don't think so. But everyone else in town seems to think you've changed. Well, I guess that's what the service does to you. You seem to be in a terrible hurry. I've got a long report to write. Write? I didn't think you could write. You haven't written me a letter since you went away. I had to get my news from other people. I suppose Blake Hardy was one of them. I certainly would have liked to have heard what he had to say. You know you don't have to worry about him. No? I hear you've been seeing him quite often. I have to be nice to him. The Hardys are the biggest people in town. 
I certainly found that out. They're one of Dad's biggest customers. Seems like everything and everybody in this town is run by Hardy's money. I'm afraid you're right, Bob. Even Dad's hardware store seems to depend upon them. Hardware? Yes, their hunting and fishing bill alone runs into plenty of money. Yeah, I suppose so. Bob, you understand. Sure glad to see you, Jamie. Nice seeing you too, Bob. Sit down. You nearly blew the works at the gas station. That certainly was dumb of me. Suppose you know what my job up here is. The Madigan gang? Right. Inspector McGray's order. Now he's sure the gang's hiding out in the Black Hill. I'm here. Barton's clerking in the grocery store in Wheelersville. Mallory's in another town. They must have a contact somewhere. And it may be here. So far, I've seen enough to make me think that it is. I can't ask many questions. That's why I'm glad you showed up here. You know everybody in town. Now, there's one man I've been watching. He's important here. And as far as I know, above us. was picked up. Foxy kid, all right. Jamie A. <laughs> That's a laugh. That's one clown out of the way, eh, Joey? G-man stuff. Think that grease monkey was getting wise to this hideout, Madigan? What's the matter, Larry? Getting a chill? Feet getting cold? No, it ain't that. It's just sitting around without action. You'll get all the action you're looking for as soon as I get the tip off. 
Is this guy lining up something? Yeah, and something sweet. Hey, who is this guy, anyway? He must be a big shot from the size of his cut on these jobs. Or a nosy guy, ain't you, Hammond? No, Madigan. You got me wrong. Someday you're going to ask just one too many questions, Hammond. And it's going to be too bad. Oh, take it easy. Him. Oh, hello, Chief. Come on in. Been kind of waiting for you. Sit down, Chief. Have a drink? You look kind of worried, Chief. It's about that Jameson guy. Joy here took care of him. Did you bring the plans of the new layout with you? Here we get, sir. No, I just want to go in. I'm sorry, sir, but I have to get off the porch. Jameson was one of my best men. Ghastly thing to have to lose him this way. I wonder what Constable Hunter's explanation will be. Well, we can thank Hunter for bringing all this trouble into town. He certainly put Highlands on the crime map. It must be through in there now. Here comes Sergeant Woods. What was it? What are they going to do to Hunter? Tell us, Wood. Why, they all but apologized to him. You mean he's going to get away with it? Yes, the coward. His record shows it. He ought to be drummed out of the service. You speaking of me, Sergeant? I was. There's nobody else to whom the term would apply. I demand an apology. An apology to you? Yes, sir, to me. Ridiculous. Report to the barracks. The charge is insubordination. You're under arrest. Dismiss. All right, I'll give you something to arrest me for. Attention! Sergeant Woods, I want an explanation of this. Constable Hunter struck me, sir. But I prefer not to press charges. Did you men see the attack? Yes, sir. Constable Hunter, do you admit the assault? Yes, sir. Then it's a case for general court-martial. Hello, Mr. Webb. Why, Bob, wait until I open up. Come on in. What's on your mind, Bob? Doc, I felt sure that you were the only one in Highland who wouldn't turn me down. Why, your father was my oldest friend. Of course I'd give you a job. But wouldn't it be better somewhere else, uh, in another city? I tried that, Mr. Wendt. But everybody seems to have heard of me and all about that court-martial. Oh, don't worry, Bob. You can stay with me uh, until you have a better opportunity. Well, I'm willing to do anything. All right, you can start now by taking inventory. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wendt. Guess I haven't forgotten how to push a pencil. <laughs> Want me to start here? Yes. Oh, uh, Mr. Wendt? Yes? Does uh, Betty get around very often? Uh, yes, yes, quite often. Come to think of it, she was asking about you the other day. 
Winton Hardware. Oh, just a moment. For you, Mr. Winton. Yes? Hello? Yes? Yes? Yes, of course. I'll be right over. Yes. I'll leave you alone for a few minutes, Bob. Look after things, will you? All right, Mr. Winton. Where are you going, Dad? I've got to go over and see Mr. Foster about a bill. Who's watching the store? I've uh, hired a young man to help me. I'd better run over and stay there until you get back. Yes, I think you'd better. You want two? Yes, two. sure you want to do Why, Bob, what are you doing here? I'm your father's new clerk. But do you think you should have come back to Highland? Why not? Well, I spoke to Inspector McCrae, and he says he may be able to do something for you after a while. That's why I thought you should have stayed away until things quiet down a little. Well, in the meantime, I have to work, don't I? But not back here where all the trouble started. You're just giving them something to talk about. Well, let people talk. At least I've got a job. Is this your idea of a job? You could get a real one someplace where people... I've got a real job here, Betty. I know, but... Now, don't you worry about that, dear. You let me work it out. <laughs> All right, Bob. Will you be over for supper tonight? Just try and keep me away. All right. We'll expect you at 7. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, dear. Have you got my doorknob? We're all out of One, one, three. Hello. Hello, Mr. Hardy? Yes. This is the Wynn Hardware Store calling, Mr. Hardy. I'm drawing up my August account and sending you the bill, and I noticed that you're charged $780 for cartridges and shotgun shells. Charged to me? Ridiculous. Who is this? It's the new bookkeeper, Mr. Hardy. My son Blake ran up those bills, and you tell Winton that he paid for them. Well, I thought it must be a mistake, sir. I couldn't imagine what one man would want all that ammunition for. What for? I'll tell you what for. He's opening the hunting lodge again this fall. And you tell him what's the time. Hello? Hello?
time the Madigan gang struck again. Yes, sir. It's always either on the first or last of the month. That's it. Maybe today will be one of those days. Have you ever list of the payrolls these local banks are handling? Yes, sir. Right there, sir. Shelton Bank. Inspector McRae speaking. What time does the Adams Oil Company payroll leave? Thank you. Stick close to the phone, Sergeant. Yes, sir. here from the Winton Hardware. All right, put it on the table and beat it. Can't do it like that. Mr. Hardy's got a sign for it. Who? Mr. Hardy, Blake Hardy. Well, if he's not here, I'll leave the package and catch him at the bank later. Sure is a tough pull up here. Want to have a drink? All right, take a drink and blow. both times. Where's Madigan in the mall? You talk all right. Thirty thirty long range rifle. Must have been the gun that got Jamie. I'll buy the look. your time with me. I'm just a dumb guy and I don't know anything. I'll smarten you up. What are you going to do? You'll find out. Give me a break, will you? I'll give you a break. Same kind of a brick you gave Jamie. Come on now, talk fast. What's the job? What bank? Is this map right? Who's on it? Quick. All right, all right, I'll tell you. Hunter calling Black Hills Post, Polo Wire. Hello? Yes. Yes, Hunter. No, the inspector's not here. Right. We'll meet you there right away. 
Come on, Roberts. Any minute now, Joey. The old eye all right, huh? Uh, too bad he missed up on those needle-pointed slugs. But you got two left, huh? One for each rear tire? Give you a minute to come out with your hands in the air. Get those two. Get the third man and be careful. Jameson. All right, come on, get out. The markings may prove it. There's a fifth member to this gang of killers, and I think I know where he is. May I use a motorcycle? Go to it. Thank you, sir. Sergeant, may I borrow your motorcycle? Okay. Turn around. Drop that gun, Hardy. How badly is hurt? Bullet through the upper arm, sir. 
Should have gotten him through the head. Caught him trying to rob the safe. Ooh, really? Told Daddy he should have changed the combination when he fired him. Yes, of course. Well, Inspector, you know where you can find me if you want me. Wait a minute, Hardy. We'd like you to come along. Well, I'll come over to the barracks later to make a full complaint. Put out your hands, Hardy. You're under arrest. How did you know where I was, sir? I also had an idea who the fifth man was. Nice day's work, huh? Then maybe he can get back in the service again? What do you mean, get back? He was never out. That's right, dear. But he struck Sergeant Wood. I saw it. And I felt it. <laughs> <gasps> yes, 